6.16 a.m. Every time I get sent to work with this kid, I have to flip the mattress to get him up. I used to arrive early, or move his clock ahead, but that seems like a different life to me now. Two years have passed since Jay's last assignment. Even longer since the boss paired me with him. He still drinks like a fish. Here's his little lady friend who went to get up and get out. He could learn something from her. One thing's changed over the years. It took Jay six blocks instead of three to fall asleep. Field assessment. One, a mysterious titanium environment proof case, something we don't see very often, and when we do, it usually implies gunshots, window jumping, hiding in sewers, or anything that might get you maimed, stitched, or killed. Two, Jason. Three, we're running late. We're out of the city limits, so I may be able to make up some time. The long road ahead reminds me of an old truck driver friend of my father's who would say, Truck driver's the kind of man only the devil would hire. The road's just a part of hell that ain't caught on fire. I'm reminded of it almost every time we make these long treks. More so these days. I suppose I'll start the tape. With Jay asleep, I can listen once through without questions or inane comments. The kid's like an accident, except I take all the hits. I'm not sure what the old man sees in him, but I'll admit, sometimes he makes me want to smile. I miss my wife. Welcome back, boys. This tape is erasing itself, so listen up. Protocol has not changed since you've been away. Unavoidably, your first job back will be dirty work. I'm sure you observed the briefcase. It's a simple exchange. One box for another. All the details are in the envelope with the tape. One last bit. You may run into familiar faces. Sources indicate several trades in that region in recent weeks. However, no one seems to want to return to work. The case belongs to the traitor. This is not a game. Whispers are spreading among the ranks that there is another organization looking to remove our antiquities management and exchange programs. Damn. What the hell, Simon? Where is it? Wow, what a mess. Hey, you fellers okay? Uh oh. I'm guessing because you're careless driving, you dropped this here fancy metal case. Damn it, Jason, wake up. I guess high hog living does make you a little lackadaisical. You fellers from the city, y'all look like salesmen. What? No! Damn city it! They wreck my ride and then shoot at me for it? Oh, I got a surprise for you. Damn, idiot. Pop, pop, pop. A dart gun, Jason? Are you trying to get us killed? Bring whatever gun you like, just make sure it fires bullets. Oh. I carry the bag, you hold the gun. That's the job. Try to stay awake for it. Me trying to get us killed? Really? There she is. You know, I have a few suggestions of my own, Simon. Like, where the hell was your head before face planting a Mack truck? What's the old man thinking, giving me the one-eyed driver? Daydreaming one-eyed driver. It looks like we walked the rest. Wonderful. Ow. Did you just blow up the car? What's going on? Man, angry redneck. You need better aim. What's on his back? Simon? I had an extra can of beans today. Too. Were you just gonna ditch me? Were you really just going to sit there and burn? The car bomb could have broken my leg. Did it? You suck. What's the stink? Can you feel the heat? I knew today was the day. I felt it in my gut. You take a shot at me, now it's my turn. Feel the fetid fury of swamp ass. The redneck with the lethal gas. Oh my god. This guy's shooting fire out of his ass. <coughs> oh, that 
so bad. Here, point this at him. What's a broken piece of mirror gonna do? Point the shiny side at him. I march off to find the briefcase and get us out of the fire. My mind stretches back. It's been coming back here a lot these last few months. Ever since I found out about this exchange, I can't get away from it. It keeps me from sleep, from food, from ever enjoying anything again. The last moments I remember being real. The last day I came home. Sear my flesh. Bingo, the briefcase. Now for something flame retardant. Drop me from the sky. Stop taking me back to the last day of my life. What have you done? Every day I relive the shock of that frigid water. Out of nowhere it will claw through my veins. I knew it was too late. Even then the thought crossed my mind not to surface. To go out in life like I had been born into it. Comforted by waters. This time not alone, but with her. Something inside me kept me going. Her throat only sounding a click. She drowned. I watched her. She seemed much smaller now than in life. She didn't want me to go. We were supposed to live forever and die together. My love would keep her safe and warm. It didn't. I made it out of the pool, but I've been drowning every day since. Mental note. A marked truck, half filled with mystery boxes all heading to the middle of nowhere shipping town. Time to put out a fire. <sighs> Man, I hate fire. Stinky fire. Okay, just point the mirror at him. <sighs> Don't fart. <laughs> what? Some time since Jason and I have worked together, I've never seen him so shaken over fire. The two extinguishers I found on the cab should bring all of this to a fast end anyway, if he pointed the mirror in the right direction. Here, give me that. You take this. Start clearing a path. Steady sweeping motion. Get under the fire to cut off the O2 supply. The mirror worked. I don't know how, but he stood frozen for a minute, then freaked out, danced around in circles, and set himself on fire. Jason, come on! Just a sec. What are you doing? The fire's over here. You feel any better now? What? I couldn't just let him burn. He was trying to kill you. You almost killed me with the car. Enough. Over hill, over dale, as we hit the dusty trail. Just as Lafayette's spyglass foresaw, the arrival of the two from the south. By the signal of smoke and fire, I think our search is over. I hear the maiden calls from the river, my smoldering brother. Where is Javier? I'm here, what do you need? There are no couriers coming today. Aren't there? No, and the smell in this place, man. I forget the air doesn't get through here. I'm easily distracted by the smell of a rose. How are you? How's the family? Are you serious? You should know better. One by one you turn them into the ghoul standing behind me. Now all I have is your shit work. Now, now, you've done so well. Your family is fine. For months I've helped you sniff out exchanges, intercept packages. Now if I go back to my boss I'll be erased. You promised you fucking psycho. You said you'd make my problems go away. You said my mother and brother's sickness will be healed. It has. And for your loyalty, you may join them in everlasting life. Fill the cup and drink from it. You've given so much for your family. Now it's your turn to become part of ours. Now. We will take care of each other. I look past Jason down the final stretch of road leading to our destination, and I'm reminded once more of Dad's old trucker friend. During moments of strife and loss, he would recite, 
It's never so bad it couldn't be worse, sir. The air here is clear and the sun bright, but despite all that, the deepest, most vaporous parts of my mind repeats, worse, sir.